What is up YouTube? My wife and I are ready to drive this thing 10,000 miles across the country. It used to be a Winnebago Revel and now it bears no resemblance because it's been modded left and right. We're gonna show it to you. All right guys, so welcome to the channel. If you're not familiar with Treehouse Brewing Company, here in Massachusetts, we have five locations. It's built to be an experience. This property that we're on right now is 150 acres, and if you've never visited before, we encourage you to look us up. Our mobile command and control unit behind me is a 2022 Mercedes-Benz 2500 Sprinter van, and on top of it is the Winnebago Revel aftermarket kit, and we've modified it heavily. So if you're a van lifer, or if you're someone that has a Revel or is interested in a Revel, hopefully something about this video will appeal to you. If you're a customer of Treehouse, I think you're gonna like the fridge, so certainly stay tuned. The exterior of the van's been entirely reimagined with the awesome black wrap. Matte black, feels mean, feels badass. Very hard to keep clean, shows a lot of scratches, but when it's clean, we love the way that it looks. Secondary modification, Michael, if we wanna come over here, Suspension wise, we have the Van Compass 4.3 upgrade. I think it's a two, two and a half inch lift. If you're thinking about doing one upgrade to your van, getting a new suspension is one of the primary things that I would recommend. If you're familiar with the highway sway that the Sprinter van can give you, this suspension essentially eliminates that and makes it drive much, much better. Here we have the Black Rhino aftermarket rims. These guys are awesome and the Wild Peak tires, super, super cool. These guys have about 10,000 miles on them and going strong. Next thing I wanna point out, front end of the van here, we have the Backwoods Adventure Mods front bumper with the Pathfinder LED light bar, which is super handy if you're driving down the trail late at night. Having this bright, bright light is super valuable. You may be asking yourself why we don't have a light bar up top. I think that they look cool, but in reading and talking with a lot of folks that have a van like this, a lot of folks have mentioned that that particular light bar can create a lot of wind noise and a lot of howling and whistling. And for me, comfort is king, especially when we're driving on the highway. Super winch, we've needed this guy a couple of times. Oh my God. One of the cool things about the van and the adventures that it can bring you on is you find yourself in conditions that will sometimes challenge the capabilities of the van. And if you put yourself into those positions to try to reach those places that no one else is camping at, I would strongly recommend that you have a winch in case you get yourself in trouble. Come on over to this side of the van. Looks so badass. We'll talk about this guy. I won't go through the finer details, but if you're a Winnebago Rebel owner, or if you're an RV owner, you may have a Thetford bathroom cartridge. So from our bathroom inside, and into here, there's essentially a cartridge that captures all that black water, I guess it's called. And when it gets full, you can empty that cartridge by finding an RV dump station. Down below is where you empty your gray water. Same thing if you're on the road. One point that I want to make, guys, is do not open this until you take this off. If you're a new Revel owner and you have a full gray water tank and you open this first and then you take this off, you're going to be in for uh, Noah's Ark or, you know, How's that go? Floods of Babylon or something? It's not gonna be good. Another aftermarket addition. This is also a Backwoods Adventure Mod ladder. So similar to the front bumper, we have this ladder to access the roof. Uh, up on the roof, we have all kinds of interesting stuff. We have solar panels that will power and add power to the lithium batteries that are inside. We have a Starlink mobile unit which will work and connect to satellites on the roof and remain connected to satellites whether or not it works remains to be seen so if you haven't if you're curious about that subscribe to the channel we'll be doing a video log every couple of days while we're on the road and then last but not least up top we have an air conditioner super straightforward but if you find yourself in the desert having that air conditioner on those super super hot nights could be a huge benefit to this van's off-road capability. If you're on the taller side, I think this particular bump out right here is for, in fact, Michael was asking me before we rolled the video, I can't fit in that thing, how do you fit in that thing? And I said, well, I'm short, it's not a problem for me. But if you're a bit taller, this bump out on the Winnebago Revel helps you get a few extra inches in on each side. And I think comfortably, six foot four inches can sleep sideways in this van, which is a pretty cool aspect of the Revel itself. The stock Revel comes with a with a rear ladder, but we replaced that with this 
uh, spare tire holder by Owl Vans. So if anything happens on the road, we have a spare tire at our beck and call. We have another roof access with the extra ladder here. This guy here is an Owl Vans case. Find yourself watching this video wondering if you should or should not get this van based on size. If you need to travel heavy, if you have a big requirement for stuff, um, whether it's clothing or gear, you're gonna find that inside there's not a ton of room for storage. And we'll talk about that once we get inside. But having exterior storage like this guy for your toolbox or for any other odds and ends, like keep a toolbox in here, I keep my leveling blocks in here, any other, any other stuff that doesn't make sense to have quick access, having exterior storage is super, super important. All right, so I think that more or less covers it as far as the outside is concerned. Everything else is stocked. There's a trailer hitch back there. There's a, there's a backup camera and all that wonderful stuff, but now we're gonna take you inside. All right, so inside the Sprinter. This is where we spent 31,000 miles in the past three years road tripping. It's actually only been two cross country road trips. My wife and I have put 31,000 miles on this thing. So hey. we've uh, spent a fair amount of time behind this wheel. One of the best investments that you can make for your van or for any vehicle is the pedal commander. This guy, I'm not entirely sure how it works. Again, I'm the wrong guy to ask in terms of how these things work. I'm not sure if it's a fuel injection thing or a computer thing, but basically this makes the uh, accelerator pedal more responsive based on which setting that you have. There's Eco City, Sport, and Sport Plus. Sport Plus, this very heavy eight, 10,000 pound sprinter van will go incredibly quickly off the line if you have this pedal commander, which can be very useful for city driving, highway driving, and things like that. Strongly, strongly recommend getting one of those if you don't have one. Because we'll be filming our travels from the road, got the GoPro mount right here. Uh, this particular mount can be kind of anything. It can be another GoPro, it can be an iPhone, it can be any number of things. We utilize for the dash cam, we have a Nextbase GW622, which is located uh, in the top right hand corner there. Pretty much everything else is stock. This Mercedes Benz interface works pretty well. Uh, enables us to you know, change what we need to change right here from the steering wheel. And we, we happen to think that the comfort and drivability of this van is great. Uh, a couple other things here, just in case we get in the wild. My wife and I do take this van very far off the beaten path and we have the Garmin InReach Mini. So if anything happens, uh, we don't have cell service. This particular guy can sound the alarm bells. I would strongly recommend if you travel off the beaten path to have one of these. Uh, up here, the little S-Pod system will control our, our fog lights and then the light bar, which is also on the front bumper, and then just kind of an altimeter. So if we're starting to get short of breath as we make our way west, we can know how far we've uh, ventured away from what we're familiar with, which is sea level. Pretty straightforward, no crazy um, wild adjustments to what came stock. So now we'll move to the back. See you back there. All right, so a few things we'll look at before we jump inside. From the outside, again, this is a Winnebago Rebel setup, and everyone that has the Rebel or is dreaming about the Rebel is familiar with the awning. Uh, with, at the push of a button, that guy right there will make its way out. One of the nice features about the Rebel awning is that when it's working as it should, if it's too windy, uh, it will trigger a sensor that will automatically retract the awning so you don't damage the awning. And it's very windy right now, so I'm gonna see actually if that will happen as we speak. Probably not, but again, if you're set up at a campsite, this little awning kind of gives you a nice area to relax in, a little bit of shade, probably helping Michael with his exposure right now. And so you're imagining you're at the campsite, you got yourself a little flip down right here, which is nice, a little cooktop. You may be wondering, do you have a grill? Do you bring a grill? Uh, the answer for my wife and I is no, but in the 22, 23 and beyond Rebels, you have a cooktop, an induction cooktop that runs on electricity, which is inside. Show you guys. So within this drawer, we've got an induction cooktop, which can plug in to your outlet right here. That's the nice thing about this particular Rebel is that there's a lot of creature comforts. You have, um, 
lithium battery power, which I'll talk more about in a minute, but you have a lot of lights in every area. And you have a lot of creature comforts like regular outlets and USB things to charge your phones. If you're in the Treehouse Adventure van, one thing that you have that hopefully you could have if you're watching the channel, we have a refrigerator that is very well stocked with all you could ever need. It's important to note that this is for campsite use only, but I have to tell you, if that's not one of the most beautiful coolers you've ever seen, I'm not sure what is. Michael's hand just started shaking. He's all excited about what he's looking at right now. If you're not stocked with Treehouse cocktails, coffee, core beers, Julius Green Haze, if you don't have those wonderful beverages at your disposal, you can utilize this as a food fridge. Nice little freezer space right there. And uh, you get the idea. But this guy all runs off the lithium battery. And yeah, it just works. General tip and trick for you, if you purchase a Rebel or if you have a Sprinter van, It'll save you a lot of, I think, frustration from what we've learned with 30,000 miles on the road. Packing too much makes everything more difficult. So learning to live leanly and learning to live with very little things means that all the extra storage nooks and compartments that you think you need for odds and ends, you can actually cut down on. And so for us, we haven't done too many modifications inside the van to increase storage space. In fact, some of them that we've done have reduced storage space. There's a couple of extra nice little storage spots. This one I'm particularly fond of. Um, when I'm on the road, that's cool. That's my Portra 400 film right there. But when I'm on the road, I actually use this for all my cables, iPhone stuff, charging stuff and the like, so that I'm able to work from the road. This guy right here is the base station for the Starlink. So. When I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this is a mobile command and control unit, myself and my wife with our business were required to work um, from the road. So we have the WeBoost little setup here that will come down when we're on the road, put this guy right here to help amplify our cell signal. And then we have the Starlink receiving base that's ena that enables us to be connected to the internet 100% of the time. It's a little bit antithetical to have an adventure van that goes way off road. Uh, to have this level of connectivity and perhaps at some point in the future we'll rip all this stuff out but in my position running a company of 390 plus people we have to be connected at all times and for us this road trip is a working trip so having these amenities which enable us to stay in touch with home are critically important and if you're someone that has the same requirements these types of upgrades in a van like this might appeal to you you have a water pump so you have a water system within the van and that enables you to have fresh water, both at the back, in the bathroom for your shower and for your flushing of your toilet, and so on and so forth. And here you have a level indicator, which tells you how much fresh water you have left. You have a gray water tank level on this, and then you have a water pump. When we go to bed at night, we turn the water pump off. If you happen to have a leak, or if something goes wrong, and your water pump's on, and you're sleeping, it would be bad. We know that because it happened to us. When you go to bed, turn your water pump off. You have your inverter, solar inverter, and your solar charge control panel. The solar panels up top are collecting power as we speak and helping to charge these batteries. I just had Adam at Built the East install the Roam Rig battery power upgrade. Instead of two lithium batteries back there, we now have three, which means that all these amenities can run off-road without the alternator and without the solar for a much longer period of time. This Rebel has a uh, diesel heater, which if you find yourself in a cold environment, you can utilize that radiant heat and then also hot water. We don't utilize hot water. If and when we have to shower, wash the dishes, we use lukewarm water. We don't think it's worth the energy expenditure. And so therefore we don't use it. But yeah, and this van is very, very capable of living off the road, living off the grid, living off away from life while staying connected. And this little area right here helps to facilitate that. One of my favorite little nooks in the van is this guy here. It's kind of like a secret compartment, secret storage control center. Got all my bear spray, all my life safety in there. A couple medical wraps and things like that in case things go wrong. But this is kind of like that secret compartment that you should or shouldn't know about where we keep all of our all of our stuff hidden behind the seat here. 
making our way back toward the living area here. A couple creature comforts, a little bit more storage here uh, on my right, Michael's left. If I open that guy up, one of our few kind of aftermarket storage upgrades is this little bamboo thing. You can get it from Target. I don't know what it's called, but it helps us elevate some of our storage here. All of our cookware um, and usually personal toiletries will live in here uh, with access to the sink, which makes life good. Super, super simple. Uh, this, I believe, Winnebago for the enthusiasts call it the pantry. I call it empty. <laughs> There's nothing in it. Once again, a lot of people will do additional shelving upgrades here. All kinds of pull-out stuff. I'm a simple man. I just pile it in there, and then when I open it, it all falls out, and then I grab what I need, and then I stuff it all back in again. Life is good. Uh, this little upgrade I love, love, love. It's just a bungee cord. And then these Scott towels. These Scott towels will last us probably this trip and one more. If you're going on a trip and you use paper towels, I would recommend using Scott towels because you'll get significantly more mileage out of this guy. And then, you know, using the bungee right here makes it, gives it a beautiful holder. This, you might be saying, oh wow, look, it's tile. It's actually like stickable plastic stuff and we just got it on Amazon and did it like in 10 minutes. Makes it look a lot nicer than the stock rendition. Take you guys inside the bathroom. Wow. Look at that. Cool. This is a sort of a contentious area, I think, of the Rebel design. A lot of folks don't actually use the indoor shower. A lot of folks won't even shower. They'll use an outdoor shower when they find a place. Uh, if you want to use the indoor shower, I'm sure it works fine. We've never used it. We certainly use the bathroom all the time but we've kind of ripped everything out pertaining to the shower and use this as like a double storage space when we're not um, you know, using it as a bathroom. We'll have shirts here hanging on the rack, but otherwise that's just that Thetford cassette toilet that I talked about earlier. Big upgrade here, got a little mirror. You know, that guy was like 50 cents on Amazon one of our major upgrades. Once, once again, a lot of people will store stuff here, but for me, I would rather just not have the stuff and figure out how to live than have stuff dangling all over the place. What we found is the more stuff we have in nooks and crannies, the more road noise you get and the less stuff you can have when you're traveling lightly, trying to experience things rather than deal with stuff clanking all over the place. The lighter, the better. Next thing I want to show you guys is the thing that gets most people that see the van excited. They're like, where do you sleep? Well, the bed's up above and you got this little thing here that brings the bed down. And that's it. Suddenly you have yourself a beautiful queen size bed. Uh, this particular mattress is aftermarket. We bought it from our friends um, Canyon Adventure Vans, which we also bought some other accoutrements that exist below the bed. But long story short, you know, when you're on the road and you find yourself back here, especially off, off the beaten path, this is very, very comfortable. Uh, you're not seeing what I see right now, but if you find yourself in the right place, you can actually sleep with the doors open, and it's just epic. I mean, you've all seen the Instagram pictures with the back doors open, staring at a mountain range or you know, a river, the ocean. It's a very real thing in this van. All right, so one more thing I want to point out to you guys before we make our way around back. Uh, we try to be utilitarian about things, simple. For privacy curtains, there's a million options on the market. You can stuff stuff in your windshield. You can stuff stuff in your windows. These guys come up for privacy, which is great. And then the window on the door comes up. So the only other area that you really need to block most of the time, even if you're in the city, is this area here. And rather than having a string option or some crazy option, we actually just use these clamps. So if you take these clamps off, this guy will just open up like so. And then you can block all light, block all view in by just clamping that guy up. And then once the door is closed, this guy comes over here, you clamp, and then you're totally private. Clamps and a curtain, that's it. So I think they call this the garage. Great little storage here in both doors. Great little storage here underneath the bed. Um, privacy in the back. You have outlets everywhere. You have access to your inverter um, and all that. A lot of your in-house utilities are accessed from the back, primarily your water system. 
So all of your filling of water, uh, dumping of water, sanitation of that particular system happens right here. Uh, this Nautilus system has made it incredibly easy for you to understand what you should be doing when you utilize this system. One design I'm not a fan of is that this particular, there's an electrical system here, I'm not entirely sure what it pertains to, but this city water in can be a little bit finicky, so having this water this close to this electricity to me makes me a bit uncomfortable, but it could be unfounded because I don't really know what it leads to. Another thing that's cool about this fan, we can't show it to you, but underneath we have the gas tank upgrade. So I, I think it's 40 gallons of diesel this guy holds and it'll drive like 700 miles. So this fan is incredibly outfitted to be way off the reservation. Couldn't love it more. Last thing I wanna show you guys within this compartment here is your lithium battery system. That Roam rig upgrade is inside here underneath in this little storage compartment. So we've sacrificed a bit of storage, but to enable us to have one third more power, which is pretty cool. And then this system right here is incredibly popular with Sprinter Van owners. It's called the GLSS system. It's made by Canyon Adventure Vans. This particular model, I think is a much older model than what they offer now in 2023. But for us, it's served its purposes wonderfully. You've got a bench top on one side, bench top on the other, storage underneath, and then this um, articulating tabletop. You can raise it up, you can articulate it from side to side, and you and yours can enjoy inside the van on a sunny day or a rainy day, a meal wherever the van may take you. All right, guys, so thanks for watching. That concludes the Treehouse Brewing Company Mobile Command Unit van tour. Uh, my wife and I are hitting the road in just a couple of days. We're going to have a ton of videos about our travels. If you're new here, we encourage you to subscribe. If you're not new here, we love you and thank you for watching. We look forward to your comments below. Take care and we'll see you next time.